Today is Saturday, January 26th. It's a nice, bright, and sunny day. Much nicer than last week, if you saw that video. And as you can see, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit more awake than I was in Friday's video. This past week has been hectic. Like, in, in a, it was hectic in an organized way. So, at work, I made sure I got there a little bit earlier, stayed there a little bit later, because this is my first week on this new project, and since it's a transition week. I want to make sure that I was doing my best to pull my weight and in order to avoid breaking anything other than learning what software and tools this team uses on this project, what the project is all about, what it does, meeting with who the project is being built for. I just been writing a lot of unit tests, some integration tests in the last few days of this week so I can't really break anything. I'll write the tests based on what we have covered, make sure we have uh, effective coverage over all of our code and then I'll essentially talk with the lead or another uh, software engineer on the team just before I push it up because that's what they asked me to do they just want me to essentially say hey this is what I did how does it look maybe tweak a, a thing here or there and don't get me wrong it is kind of uh, daunting to say look at my code tear it apart if you need to if it completely sucks let me know if it's good let me know and it's just you don't you think it's good it does what it's supposed to do but is that how they do it so it's been that type of transition week i think i've been doing fairly well they've been telling me i've been doing fairly well so that's really what's been going on this week and then after since i've been staying a little bit later but i still had to do my at home chores and my at home work i've been a little tired but that's life. I'd rather be too busy than not busy enough. So I, I, I'm okay with it. And as for the giveaway that I talked about announcing this week, I'm gonna be postponing that for another week or two. There are a few variables at stake that may determine how soon I can essentially host that giveaway because I'm in communication trying to figure out what exactly I want to give away. And I'm this close to securing... Gotta love jet noise. Also live in Hampton Roads that's a normal occurrence but stay tuned for the giveaway because I haven't forgot about it I'm not gonna make empty promises I said I'm gonna give something away I want to give something away it's just in due time within the next two weeks is how it's looking right now things do change but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful but for the time being since this week was rather hectic I actually have to go to the gym my normal gym schedule is Monday Wednesday Friday but that didn't really go as planned so instead it was Thursday Saturday and then I'll maybe go tomorrow not 100% sure but when I get back we're gonna be going over the title of this video all about putting together the YouTube subscriber counter coding it out I may carry it over to tomorrow but y'all will see how it goes all right time to get to business but first I need to well I guess I don't really need to clean up most of this push some of this a little bit over to the side but now it's actually time to get to the topic of this video and that is the YouTube subscriber counter now I've mentioned this in previous video, but what we have is a solderless breadboard, a Wemos D1 Mini. I think this is what I need. I just did a bunch of research online to figure out what components I need, and uh, this is essentially what I came up with. This is, uh, oh, this is the LCD screen. So let's dive on into here. There we go, the LCD screen. Eh. Let's set it face down. And then we have the wires. We're going to use these wires for now. I don't know where my solder gun is, so we're not going to be able to do that part today. We're just going to be hooking it on with these. We have female to female, we have male to male, and then we have uh, female to male. So I think we just need the male or the female to female for now. But these are close by in case we need them. All right, let's take out solder this breadboard. See what we can do. In all honesty, let me put my giant mouse pad here just, just because. Start a spreadboard. And then the Wemos. Static, sensitive devices not to be handled by unauthor unauthorized personnel. Well, if we blow it up, we blow it up. Let's see what we can do. And then over here we have the display. All right, so let's get this mounted onto the breadboard. 
All right, now that we have that set, is throwing the ground. So I see right here we have a ground. <gasps> gotcha. All right, we're just going to be going down the line. No other color coding techniques than that. We're going to now throw the 5 volt to the VCC. So the VCC is on the LCD, 5 volt on the Wemos. Now we're throwing the SDA of the LCD over to D2 over here on the Wemos. And if you're wondering, I'm going to link all of these components in the description below. Everything that you see right here, I think, yeah, just these things, only like 20 bucks. So not too bad. And then we're going to follow that one down the line. So we just did SDA to D2. We're going to do, do SCL to D1. And that's, uh, that's basically it. Just four wires like so. But before we actually power it on, let's take a closer look. So over here on the LCD screen, you can see the ground, the VCC, the SDA, and the SEL. And you can see the color-coded wires to their respective places over here on the Wemos. And like, I don't know if you can read either of these letters, but we can see the 5 volt, the ground, the D2, and the D1 slot. Now what should happen when I plug this in is a blue blinking light on the Wemos like this and that shows that we are getting power to the Wemos so good thing we didn't build up any static electricity to fry that so that's a uh, good proof of that and nothing should be happening to the LCD as far as I'm concerned because although we did hook it up that was just for hardware purposes for the time being the reason for the LCD is to display the subscriber count and since we don't have anything set up and coded just yet it makes sense that this isn't displaying anything basically one big reason why we chose the Wemos D1 Mini V3 the version 3 is because it is Wi-Fi enabled and we need it to be Wi-Fi enabled because we need it to fetch the data from the YouTube API so we're going to be writing up a program that is fetching data from YouTube API and this is going to be connected to the internet so it can continuously pull that data down from the YouTube data API and display it over onto the LCD screen. And that is what we're about to do now. All right, so first and foremost, what you're gonna to wanna to do is come on over to your Google Developer Console. If you don't have one, just create a Google account, log in, and we're gonna create a new project. So what we're gonna name this is YouTube Sub Counter. Once you've created that, what we want to do is enable APIs and services. We're going to enable the YouTube data API. D3. We're going to enable. And then once we have that enabled, we're going to come over to credentials. We're going to want to be creating a credential right here. What we're going to want to do is skip the step and create an API key. So we could just name this API key one. You can see all that does. Basically, this allows us to have access to the YouTube data API. I'm going to create it. You're not going to be able to see my API key for obvious reasons, but this is what we're going to be using, integrating it into our code so we can actually have access to the YouTube data API. Now it's time to get onto the code. So as far as the code is concerned, I'm fairly confident that it's doing what it needs to do. I mean, it's not the cleanest code in the world, but as you can see down here, it compiles properly. And then if we go over to the serial monitor, you can see that it is connected to the Google API and it is pulling down my YouTube subscriber count. Right now is at 56,152. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to do so and um, that, that number will go up. But it's pulling it down about every minute or so. And over here, well, let me preface before I go over the code. Like code, I'm, I'm decent at, that's kind of what I do. But this is my first ever Arduino-esque project. I just installed Arduino IDE, so if there's anything cringeworthy going on with any of my work that you just saw or, or what's going on here, be nice, be nice, but please let me know because I'm here to learn. That's, that's basically what I'm just trying to do. I'm trying to learn more and more about this aspect of things, the electronics, because I'm, I'm fairly ignorant. But over here, of course, I have placeholders in for the SSID, the password, and the API key because I, those, are, those are mine. The channel ID, though, that's public to everybody. That's my channel ID. Uh, once I go offline off this video, I'll put in all of that information back in. But I had to make sure that those were up there, good to go. And we have a little bit down here. Oh, first, let's talk about these. So some of these fairly um, self-explanatory, but over here, Liquid Crystal. I have an I2C LCD display. So this was 
incredibly necessary because I had to do a lot of work on this display in order for it to plan to display properly. But we'll get to that uh, display aspect in a sec. And then down, and that's where this comes into play, a little bit of it. And then, of course, we have our void setup. From what I can tell, this isn't really too, uh, too out there. It's kind of basic. The loop, all of this code will be on GitHub eventually. I'm not going to put it up when I put this video up because there are a few things that I need to do beforehand, but eventually. If you're watching this in the future, then maybe the GitHub link is down there or on my GitHub. But, and then um, connect to Wi-Fi, which this is, I'm calling this up here within a Wi-Fi status. So if Wi-Fi status isn't connected, then connect to Wi-Fi. And then it runs through all of this. The LCD is supposed to let me know it's connecting to Wi-Fi and then goes through all of what it needs to do, you know, prints out dots for every, that it is still connecting to Wi-Fi. Then it clears it out, prints out Wi-Fi connected. And then down here is where it gets interesting. So print subscribers and LCD formatting. I basically pulled this from a source to format the specific LCD screen with numbers. And that was after I was doing a lot of research trying to figure out how exactly to display this because this, this is a little bit different of an LCD screen. And I wanted to essentially make it so the numbers were as big as possible on this LCD screen. So this is kind of what it looks like. And then of course we want to print the subscribers, print the digits, print digit to screen, and then the digits go on down here. Some of that code will explain why over in serial monitor you will see 56153 subscribers and then you'll see 56153 subscribers counting down like that. So that kind of explains why. And then some other code right here, so on and so forth. Fun. So when it comes to this, I apologize if I'm doing anything cringeworthy. Like I said, advice is welcome, constructive criticism is welcome, but this is where it's getting interesting. So, and I really need some help here. Basically, you see that it compiles properly. You see over in the serial monitor that it, it does what it needs to do. And now that I put in my credentials, I'm going to upload this. It is should be connected to the proper port. So over here you can see now that it is uploading, you can see the blue light blinking. I'm assuming that means that the program here is essentially communicating with that to do its job. All right, so now that it's done its job and it's at 100% from uploading to Flash, nothing is happening. Isn't this when this is supposed to be saying connecting uh, to Wi-Fi, connected, and then it's supposed to print out what I need to print out, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out at this point in time, and I can't seem to get it going. Been having a little bit of trouble. And actually, here's something that I just noticed. It actually gave me a warning, ESPCOM send command, wrong direction command. Um, it was actually expecting this instead of that. So that's something I'm going to look into here in a sec. But do any of y'all know off the top of your head why this is happening? And is this why this isn't working? Although going into this video and working on this project, I thought I was going to have like a complete item inside of an enclosure, all of that put together properly. That didn't really turn out that way. And ignore it's in the tap man back there playing Fortnite. I like to put on something ambient that I don't really have to watch. I can just kind of listen to while I do work like this. My arm's getting tired. Let me put this down on the, on the tripod here. That obviously didn't get done. Uh, I still have work to do and I'm not sure when that will get all the way complete and enclosed because I've been talking with Josh, he's actually a subscriber. He contacted me offering to print me uh, or design, print, and send me a 3D printed enclosure for the YouTube counter. So we've been talking back and forth trying to figure out how to go about it and, and all of that stuff. So, I mean, that's freaking awesome. I, one, Josh, thank you. And two, between all the logistics of that, that may push this back a little bit further. But in this series, which this is what, episode four, episode five? Uh, I never know. This won't get done next episode because, of course, we'll have to do all of that work inside the enclosure. But I'll definitely update you guys within this series of when that actually gets complete. And then you'll see it sitting on my desk in the future videos. So for those of you who know more about this topic than me, I'd really appreciate some input, some constructive, constructive criticism. Not too much mean stuff. I can't handle it. But 
This has been a lot of fun, regardless of how I look. I don't know if I look tired or what, but putting all together all this code and whatnot, I really enjoyed it. And I really like the electronic component of it, even though it's given me a hard time. That's fun too, just because it gives me a little bit of hands-on work instead of typing all the time. But I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. If you're new here, make sure this YouTube subscriber counter can get as, as high as it can in numbers by subscribing to the channel. Like the video if you liked it. And uh, I appreciate all of y'all helping out, sticking around. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Peace.